13.2, define general angles and use radian measure. Teacher, why do we use radians? Hmm, because radians are cool. So 10 minutes later, the teacher's thinking, wait, I got it, because radians are rad. I should have said that during class. The great thing about being a teacher is that you can save those perfect responses you thought of 10 minutes later for the following semester or year. One year later, teacher, why do we use radians? Because radians are rad. What a clever teacher. I'm cracking up over here. <laughs> All right, so some key terms. Angles in standard position. In a coordinate plane, an angle can be formed by fixing one ray called the initial side. So that's one ray on this side. And rotating the other ray, that's this one, and that's called the terminal side. Well, obviously, the initial side stays here, and the terminal side's the ending side. Terminal, the ending, you know about the vertex. So we rotated about the vertex here. So we have an initial, we have a terminal, and we now formed our angle. An angle is in standard position if its vertex is at the origin and its initial side is on the positive x-axis. So basically, we know it's in standard position if the initial side is laying right here and it's going from the origin that we're rotating that angle towards. So draw an angle with the given measure in standard position. That just means that we start our angle here and we go 135 degrees. Remember, this is 180, this is 90, so 135 degrees is going to be somewhere between 90 and 180. So that is our angle there. 640, well, let's see, 640, we can definitely take a 360 out of that, and we come up with 08 to 280 degrees. So it means we go one time around and then we go around another 280 degrees. So this is 90, 180, 270, and a little bit more. So we end up right here. You do not need that whole spiraling thing. I was just trying to show you what I was thinking. All you really need is this ray right here to show me that angle. Negative 105 degrees, well that's just going counterclockwise, so this would be 90, and that would be like negative 105 degrees right there. Coterminal angles are just angles where the terminal sides coincide. So what do I mean by that? I mean that like 0 degrees and 360 degrees would be coterminal. because their ray would be the same. Um, what else would be the same? Maybe 140 degrees and add 360 to that, you would get 500 degrees, so they're coterminal. So coterminal angles are just angles when you add plus or minus 360 degrees times any integer value, we get back at it because I'm saying that we could have zero, we could have 360, we could have 360 plus 360, which is seven, 20, and so that would be adding 360 times 2, and so forth. When we get into radians, you're going to see that we're going to do plus or minus 2 pi times n, but we're going to get there. I'm just going to write it here so you'll have it in your notes. Find one positive angle and one negative angle that are coterminal with negative 215 degrees first, so why don't we just add 360 and we would get 145 degrees and then let's do negative 215 why don't we just subtract 360 and we would get negative 575 degrees on this one we could just subtract 360 and we get 210 degrees we could add 360 to 570 or we could just subtract off another 360 and get negative 150 degrees. There's not one right answer for any of this stuff. You just keep adding 360s or keep subtracting 360s and those are coterminal. Now, converting between radians and degrees. So here's this little chart with the conversion on each of these and it looks really, really intimidating. But let me just show you something. All you really need to know is that pi is equal to 180 degrees because a full circle around is 2 pi, and how do we get that? Well, remember back when you learned the circumference of a circle, you learned that the circumference was 2 pi r. Anybody who forgot that, fuzzy wuzzy was a bear, area equals pi r squared, twinkle twinkle little star, circumference equals 2 pi r. You'll never forget it again, I know, so good. So circumference equals 2 pi r, and really soon we're going to learn about the unit circle. And the unit circle just means that the radius is 1. So if 
our radius equals 1, then our circumference one time around the circle would be equal to 2 pi. And that's really where all this stuff comes from. The biggest takeaway on this slide is that pi radians, and you can just abbreviate that rad, is equal to 180 degrees. So when I ask you to convert 75 degrees to radians, again, pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. We go 75 degrees. We want to convert units. We want to go into radians from degrees. We want degrees to cancel out with degrees. So we have the 180 goes with the degrees and the pi goes with the radians. And so you simplify that down to 5 pi over 12 radians. In this problem over here, you have negative 5 pi over 4, the radians are in the top, so we need the radians in the bottom, that's pi of them, and 180 degrees goes in the top, we can cancel out the radians, we can also cross out the pi, and 180 divided by 4 is 45, and so we have negative 5 times 45, which is negative 225 degrees. So again, this is just unit conversion. If you have degrees in the top, you want to cancel out with degrees on the bottom. And just know that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees, and you can do all this stuff quite easily. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.